This video is about right triangles and irrational numbers, and we'll use the Pythagorean theorem here. The Pythagorean theorem allows us to take a geometrical approach to irrational numbers. Now remember what we said earlier about irrational numbers. Numbers such as the square root of 2, which is equal to approximately 1.414. But these digits go on and on and on forever and never repeat. We can never write this number out as a decimal exactly because these digits never end. They, they never terminate and they never repeat. It's a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. And it's an irrational number. We can't write this as a ratio of two integers. We can, however, accurately construct a line segment with this length. And here's how. Let's say we take a a straight line that's length 1 and we put at a right angle here another line of the same length and we form a right triangle with those two. Okay, If we can do this accurately and we can do this fairly accurately with a compass and a straight edge but we know the procedure we're limited only by the accuracy of the devices we're using to draw this. The procedure here is known to construct a, a side and then copy it the same length at a right angle right there. Well if this is length 1 and this is length 1 and let's look at the hypotenuse here we'll call it C. The Pythagorean theorem says that C squared has to be 1 squared plus 1 squared and that's obviously 1 plus 1 which is 2. So C squared is equal to 2 and so if we take the square root of each side we know that C is equal to the square root of 2. So even though we can't take this number, the square root of 2, and write it out exactly, we can draw this triangle and know that side C is that length. So we can accurately construct a line segment of that length. And what's also interesting is once we create this line segment of length square root of 2, we can use that to create other segments of length square root 3, square root of 4, square root of 5, square root of 6, and so on. I'll show you how. Let's take this length right here and just lay it down flat. So I'll, I'll make a new picture here. So this is length square root of 2. And then at a, at a right angle to that, let's put another segment of length 1. And now let's compute the length of the hypotenuse here. Okay, we'll call it c. Well, c squared has to be this squared plus that squared. So that's going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared. And the square root of 2 squared is just 2. And 1 squared is 1. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So if c squared is equal to 3, then c has to be the square root of 3. So we've now constructed a segment here, right there, that hypotenuse, that has length square root 3. Now if I were to take that length and use it to make another triangle, I'm going to lay take a segment this length right here and lay it down flat like this. Okay, So that's length square root 3 and then I put another segment up here of length 1 and let's call the hypotenuse C here and let's find the hypotenuse. Well, Pythagorean theorem again. C squared has to equal this squared plus that squared. So it's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared. And the square root of 3 squared is just 3 and 1 squared is obviously 1 and 3 plus 1 is 4. So c squared is 4, so c is the square root of 4. And we know the square root of 4, that's 2. But let's, um, let's just continue this process one more time. Let's take this length here and lay it down flat. So this length is the square root of 4, or just 2. And then we'll put another one up here at a right angle of length 1, and we can calculate the length of the hypotenuse here. We'll call it c. And we know that c squared has to be this squared plus that squared. So 2 squared plus 1 squared. And that's easy. 2 squared is 4, and 1 squared is 1, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So if c squared is equal to 5, then c has to be the square root of 5. 
So you see we've constructed segments of length square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 4, or actually square root of 3 was down here, um, square root of 4, square root of 5, and we could go on and construct lengths of square root of 6, square root of 7, and so on. Now the interesting thing is this really disturbed the Pythagoreans. They could, they, the, the Greeks were very good at geometry and they figured out most of the geometry that we know today was figured out by the ancient Greeks. And they were good at geometry and they knew that they could construct line segments with these various lengths, such as the square root of 2. But they couldn't write out these numbers. And the, the Greek thinkers at the time, Pythagoras in particular, was the leader of this inner circle, this elite group of mathematicians who were also the political and religious leaders of the culture at the time. And they had this understanding of the world, this view of the world that was based entirely on number. They believed that there were a certain number of planets, everything fit together perfectly with numbers. In fact, these guys discovered musical theory based on numbers. They knew that certain certain notes would go together to make nice sounding chords. You know that if you play two notes on the piano, every note doesn't sound good together. You play the wrong notes and it sounds very dissonant. But if you play the right notes together, they make this chord. And the frequency of the vibrations that's making those notes adds up in nice integer numbers. And their whole view of, and, and, and the, the Pythagoreans figured this out. And their whole view of the world, everything was based on number. And when they realized that there were these numbers like this that represent things in the real world, like the, the length of that side of a triangle, but numbers that they couldn't write out because these digits go on and on forever, this really disturbed them. And they thought that this idea of irrational numbers was going to undermine their whole philosophical view of the world, and that it would also then undermine their position as the political and religious leaders of the world. So they made an agreement not to discuss this. Don't talk about this with anyone outside this inner circle of Pythagorean thinkers. And they actually imposed the death penalty for anyone who was going to discuss irrational numbers. And this one guy named Hippasus, he was found discussing irrational numbers in public and they killed him for it. Hippasus was executed by drowning for leaking the secret of irrational numbers. So these guys took this very, very seriously. And fortunately today we have a little more open policy on these things. We, uh, we don't want to keep this knowledge secret. People today tend to want the world to be a better educated place. So hopefully I'm not going to be executed for discussing this on this video.